Hi, in this uh, short presentation, I wanted to highlight some differences between uh, upcoming AFC practices in 6 gigahertz versus some of the DFS related things which have been around with us in the 5 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, I decided to do this as I get a lot of questions comparing these two. Are they the same? Are they similar? Uh, what are the differences, etc.? And I thought it might be useful to just take a look at some of the nuances here. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. First DFS, because historically that's been uh, what has gone on earlier. In 5 gigahertz, quite some time back, many countries released spectrum up to about say 500 odd megahertz. And in some regions of the 5 gigahertz, they had put some stipulation that the Wi-Fi systems need to work smoothly with existing radar applications. As you know, these are non-communication applications, typically used for a variety of things like sensing weather in some of the airports, meteorological stations, and such places. And like that, there could be mostly civilian applications using radar, which uses typically short pulses, narrower bandwidths compared to Wi-Fi to do a variety of things. So this was roughly this region, uh, you know, that was classified as a DFS region. It varied a little by country. It also had different waveforms and we have had it in place for, you know, quite some time. What does it require the Wi-Fi systems to do? Most of the onus is on the access point, which needs solutions built in, typically done by the chipset player, which are used to detect waveforms of different radar types in major geos. And uh, again, all with, within a certain time, with certain accuracy. And uh, the access point, once it detects a radar within thresholds and so on, has to inform the clients associated using typically the channel switch announcement or the extended channel switch announcement. Okay. Clients on their part need to support this so that they can move to a channel which is non-DFS or for which DFS check has been done by the AP through various other means. Okay, so this has been uh, around for quite some time. It had some glitches initially at the start where many clients would not support this. And so you had 5 gigahertz deployments there, uh, you know, a little bit less prevalent, but now I think most of the things are sorted out and we have a variety of deployments, including DFS. What about AFC? AFC is just coming online. It's applicable to 6 gigahertz in regions like US and other geos where the incumbents did not want the unlicensed band activity like Wi-Fi to disturb their operation. So the FCC came up with some regulations for power and deployments in certain parts of the 6 gigahertz spectrum. And uh, while in the US and similar geos, they allowed low power indoors across the spectrum, but any power above a certain limit, which is called as standard power in the lingo, as well as outdoor deployment or with external antennas, all of them needed to have this AFC implementation. Okay. So what does AFC try to achieve? Uh, so one of the major incumbents is the point-to-point -point, uh, backhaul systems used by a variety of operators. Um, and what they want is protection around a certain area of their communication from any unlicensed band usage. So that is in nutshell what AFC is trying to implement. Okay, And as I said, this is only in certain parts of the 6 gigahertz spectrum, not in all parts of the 6 gigahertz spectrum uh, because of certain uh, types of users and their uh, details which are known to the FCC to help us achieve this objective. 
So how does AFC roughly get implemented? So an access point could use a location system like GPS, not mandatory, and contact an AFC operator typically once a day. Again, there are lots of rules and regulations, which would in turn have information from databases opened up by FCC and similar regulatory domains and would advise this access point about channels that it can use or channels that it should avoid, power levels, etc. Okay. It could be either done from the access point or some proxy unit like a controller typically used in enterprise and such campus deployments. Obviously, this is still not implemented uh, fully. I think still we are in the very early stages, should get off the ground very soon. So what are, in a nutshell, the differences between AFC and DFS? So remember, DFS detection was left to the AP implementation. As I said, usually the chipset player uh, comes up with a solution. Um, typically, this is uh, radar waveforms, which are probably deep inside the chip solution uh, where they detect the radar and then act accordingly. One of the challenges has been that the AP has to continuously detect with the rules of the uh, DFS system. There are lots of false positive cases, which has been a problem for the industry. Uh, you know, unnecessarily, uh, you know, disrupting operations when there was no radar, etc. And I think some inflexibility, other than what has been built in to the AP chipset side, you couldn't bring in new waveforms. AFC looks like a very futuristic technique because this now is a spectrum database uh, kind of approach. A regulator seemingly has a lot of control because they can define uh, new types of users, prioritized usage. In fact, one of the examples, uh, at least in the US, is a system called CBRS, which uses a similar approach. Okay, And it seemingly has a lot of flexibility as the regulator wants to control the so-called unlicensed band. Uh, with a lot of prioritized usage based on location and so on okay so i think dfs was an old style method suitable maybe for a non-communication usage uh, when we did not have the cloud-based methods of knowing information uh, reasonably well i think today we are in the era of a database based spectrum access and if afc is successful I think it could open the door for a way to regulate spectrum, at least for the unlicensed bands, um, much different from what we have seen in earlier times. Hope that was useful. Um, please take a look at our website for more information. We also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you.